For those of us striving to decrease dependence on fossil fuels, shrink utility costs, and preserve the environment for future generations, geothermal heating and air conditioning is the right choice. Let's take a look at one of the important steps in installing a geothermal system, drilling into the earth to establish the ground heat exchanger. The average deep earth temperature in central Texas is around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. When we install the ground heat exchanger, we want to get down into those cool temperatures. Today we are drilling five 300 foot deep wells. Steve and Joe with the Ball Drilling Company have come up from Marble Falls, Texas to install the vertical loops for us. We are punching down through a layer of limestone into shale. Shale provides a fine heat exchange medium in which to dissipate the heat from the house. We are drilling in 20 feet at a time. The drill stem pipe we use comes in 20 foot lengths, so we drill 20 feet, lift the first shaft into the air, unscrew it and set it aside. We add a 20 foot stem to the pipe in the ground, drop it back in, reattach our first shaft and drill another 20 feet. Steve and Joe have been doing this for years together, so they operate as a well-oiled machine. Without speaking to one another, they keep up the action in a consistent rhythm. Drill 20, pull up, attach another stem, drop and drill. While the drill bit is pressing downwards on the hole, High pressure air is forced down the center of the drill stem. This air blows the dirt or tailings out of the hole. Drillers like to drill with dry air as long as possible because it is fastest. If they hit some ground moisture though, they will need to injection drill with water to help break loose the damp earth. Keeping a drill rig maintained and in excellent operating condition takes work. Ball drilling is one of the best. Things do break and need repair, but with their well cared for rig, I always know that they will have the least amount of downtime as possible. Underneath the drill stem, you can see the turntable that the stem drops through. The turntable rotates the drill stem and bit, while the draw works pulls down on the stem with the weight of the entire truck. When the driller sets up the rig to drill, he disengages the drive shaft of the truck from the differential that turns the wheels and engages it to a shaft that powers the turntable, air compressor, draw works, and water pump. All these tools can be controlled by the operator standing on the tail of the rig. We reached 300 feet at last. Now it is time to pull up each drill stem 20 feet at a time. Again, Joe and Steve fall into the rhythm of a job well practiced. As soon as Steve moves the rig to the next hole, Joel will bring a 300 foot long coil of 1 inch loop piping over to the hole and drop it in. He will backfill the hole with several loads of crushed limestone or 3 8 diameter pea gravel, especially brought in for the purpose. About 5 feet of loop will be left for us to tie our manifold into after we trench the well field out. Great job guys! And thank you, Lonnie Ball, for sending us the best. 